We're in Wakefield. We're in the um, waterfront um, master plan area. We're on the headland site, which is where the building is located, surrounded by the river Calder, running on all two sides along here. Well, the brief um, from client side was basically related to the cultural aspirations of the building, which was mostly to do with creating a building of national and international significance, um, but also at the same time providing a building that enriches and inspires the local community in combination with the gift of the trustees of the 30 um, Hepworth Plasters, this was a purpose-built building um, to display art. The context in a way led us to explore an agglomeration of um, 10 small-scale volumes and that in a way led us to the concept of agglomerating these volumes to um, refer to the small-scale character of the surrounding buildings, the industrial nature of those buildings. Um, it was important for us to break the volume down into smaller, uh, more animated elevations, really. I think one of the really special things about the design here is the sculptural quality of, of the building. It almost feels like a work of sculpture in and of itself. And the way the different volumes uh, expand and contract throughout the building adds to uh, creating a, a, an environment in which people really enjoy spending time. It's so unexpected to suddenly walk into one gallery space that opens out in this dramatic way. The building is made out of um, fair-faced concrete. It's cast in situ on site um, and it enhances the monolithic um, nature of the building. The building doesn't really have a back or front. That's why as you walk around, all elevations in a way are of similar importance. And the monolithic nature also allowed us obviously to, to place the building right up against the water to have its feet dipping into the water and forming part of a flood defence system which runs through the building and along the garden side. You will notice that the roofs are made in the same material, so also the, the volume wrapping over the roofs um, has a consistency in, in, um, in its expression and materiality which was important for the entire concept. Essentially, um, the building has two floors which are split between the sort of public functions, the, the supporting functions on the ground floor, all the back of house spaces, the delivery entrances, the, the museum facilities on the ground floor. And then upstairs you basically have a circular arrangement of gallery spaces, um, which are really just for the exhibition of art. You have um, a series of materials all inspired by the, by the industrial character not only of the space, but you have the concrete on the exterior, which is an industrial material, slightly enhanced to give it that sort of special character. We wanted the building to be slightly off color of the sort of normal gray concrete. It's actually called the Hepworth Brown. Um, so it's, it's brown in nature, the pigment, but actually varies depending on the sky. On the inside of the building, you have a similar uh, mix of materials. You have an industrial flooring material normally used in warehouses and you have on the ground floor an MDF cladding, which is quite a you know, normal, cheap material, but it gives us a slightly different character from upstairs. So there's a sort of difference between downstairs and upstairs, enhanced by the wall lining of those public spaces. One of the wonderful things about the gallery is the amount of natural light that comes in. It doesn't feel like a hermetically sealed building. I think having these great big picture windows in each gallery that really takes account of the site. It's a very exciting site. The building is actually sitting, one facade of the building is sitting in the river Calder and we've got this terrific garden um, and space around the gallery and you feel like the building has a, an open dialogue with that. And I think people really respond to natural light coming into these spaces. It makes the works of art feel very different on a minute by minute basis and one of the really wonderful things about this building is how long the visitors spend here and I think that is very much to do with the kind of atmosphere David Chipperfield's created with the natural light and the way the different spaces flow into one another.
Obviously, I'm, I'm delighted to see that the building has been uh, welcomed so much by the community. I mean, the first uh, year saw 500,000 visitors, which is amazing in, in, the, in the context of what was really what the building was designed for, what the expectations were. So it's amazing to be able to stand here and say, you know, it's been a real success. Um, the visitors um, are coming. There are still about a thousand visitors per day, uh, every day, and that's that's just such a, a great feeling to be able to stand here and say, you know, we've achieved that. Having David Chipperfield as an architect has really given us a world-class building with a terrific set of gallery spaces where the attention to detail in the design um, and the way the spaces have been created to show art uh, 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 have been paramount in David's thinking and they're just exquisite spaces in which to encounter works of art and spend time in.